Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now you guys have been asking for Haku from Spirited Away for a hot minute, so I feel like it's finally time to let you guys have what you have been asking for. So that is what we are going to be making today, Haku from Spirited Away. So let's get started. To start, I take some tin foil or aluminum foil or aluminum foil and squish it into the rough head shape of Haku. And I do this for a couple reasons. The first being it's going to save clay because clay is expensive. And then it's going to make sure that the head stays pretty light so it won't flop over. And then once that's done, I just put a base layer all over the tin foil and start pushing around until I get the general head shape that I'm going for for Haku. And I'm making sure to look at a ton of, say it with me, people say it with me, references, people, references. I was looking at a bunch of references of Haku from so many different angles because this is a very well-known character, a well-loved character, and I want to make sure that I get it as accurate as I, in my current skill level, can be. I'm also making sure to keep it as small as possible, which was really difficult. And this was a whole challenge in itself because if you know anything about me and you've seen my YouTube channel, you know I make things that are gigantic in size, not things that are tiny, tiny. And he's not tiny, tiny per se, but in terms of like things I sculpt, his head was itty bitty. <laughs> but I wanted to make sure that I kept it small so that he would somewhat fit into the base that I had an idea for later on. But just doing this when it technically it's not even that small made me really appreciate the people who can sculpt extremely tiny and intricate details. Because I feel like I lost some details with him just because I'm not used to sculpting small and I'm used to having a bigger uh, quote unquote canvas to work on and to get all those details that I normally would. But here... I'm just making sure not to squish his face. That is my only goal was to try to not squish it. This different colored clay you see me using is cost clay, which is a godsend and I highly recommend it. Once it's baked, it stays still completely flexible, which is great because if I hadn't have done this, I would have broken these horns at least 20 times. Once everything is basically sculpted to how I want it, I then go over the entire thing with a bunch of tiny little itty bitty strokes to give a nice fur texture, making sure to keep in mind what direction it would go if he was a real creature so it's not just all going in one direction. And then I brush the whole thing in rubbing alcohol just to get rid of any jagged strokes I may have done. And then the head is finished and it's time to move on to his chicken leggies. <laughs> and for that, I'm going to be doing the same thing that I did with the last video where I made cost clay legs so that they were bendable. The idea is that you take a thick enough wire so that it can still bend against the force of the clay. And so when you sculpt the clay on and you have everything done and it's baked, you can still bend it and pose it and move it like it was uh, normal wire and like fabric, which is what I normally do. Now, I am aware that you can see the armature in the background. Uh, for continuity's sake, it made more sense to have the feet with all the sculpting, but uh, just pretend that armature isn't there right now because we're about to go into ASMR armature time, so... Yeah, let's go build the armature that you totally don't see. To attach the head to the armature, I actually carve a hole in the back of the tin foil and then I just fill that with hot glue and then insert the ball and sockets actually into the back of the head. And then once that hot glue cures, it's locked in. It ain't going nowhere. With that done, it's time to build up the body. And for that, like I always say, I'm using quilt batting and it's just this cottony thing that comes in a really long sheet because you know it's made for quilts and then I cut it in strips and wrap it around the body over and over until the body is built up to how I want making sure not to build up too thick because whatever fabric I'm going to add on top of that is going to add additional thickness so we want to keep that in mind but like I always say if you want chunk 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 boy you go and you get chunk 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 boy if you want thin 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 boy you go and you get thin 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 boy okay we support all body shapes and sizes here I wanted thin thin noodle boy because Haku is a noodle, so it only made sense. 
Once it was built up, it is now time to add fabric over that body, and I'm going to be using just plain white faux fur. Thankfully, Haku is very simple, so I don't have to make myself suffer today. <laughs> sewing is suffering. Bless those people who love sewing. Sewing is suffering. But if you would actually like to know what I'm doing, I cut a piece of fabric the entire length of the body and then I'll cut slits for the legs to slide through, kind of like I'm making a vest, and then I'll trim it so it's nice and snug around the body and just sew straight down with a basic stitch. And then I'll repeat that same exact process for the limbs. I try to keep it as uncomplicated as possible because years into this, sewing is still a foreign thing to me. And while I'm sewing, let's take a second to talk about this video's sponsor, Surfshark. With Surfshark VPN, you can travel the world virtually from the comfort of your own home. Are you wanting to watch a specific show or movie, but it's not available in your country? Simply use the VPN to virtually plop yourself anywhere in the world and get access to a bunch of different libraries. That's how I got access to all the Ghibli movies. I virtually plopped myself into Canada and went on Netflix and I got access to them. I'm definitely going to be binging these later. Are you traveling around but don't want a certain employer to know? Simply connect back to your country to get access to all your home amenities. You may want to add a zoom filter though. And while you're traveling, use the Surfshark VPN to stay safe on public Wi-Fi by encrypting all of your internet traffic. So if any of this interests you, get Surfshark VPN at surfshark.deals slash kpcreations and enter promo code kpcreations for 83% off and three extra months for free. And thank you once again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Once that's done, it's time to trim down the body because as much as we love a floofy noodle, Haku is a very thin, slim down noodle. So we gotta, you know, make sure all that fluff is off except for his little floofy mane on top. And for that, I'm using a pet shaver, which is my go-to tool. And anybody who actually wants to make a bunch of art dolls, I highly recommend using because it just gets all the fur off very quickly and easily and smoothly. But even still, I like to go back in with some scissors just to detail all the legs, especially just to make sure that all the joints to prominent and I got anything that the trimmer might have missed. Now we're not completely done with sewing, I still need to make his scales. I'm going to be trying something a little bit different. I mask off the area where I want the scales to be in masking tape and then I cut that down and trim it so it's the shape that I want on his body so I'm trying to be as accurate as possible. And then I'll take that masking tape off, place it on fabric that I want to use, in this case it's minky, and just trace that out and pin it together. Now it looks a little bit weird here, I'm aware, uh, but basically I just pinned a layer of quilt batting in between the two fabrics because I'm trying to replicate kind of puffy scales and seeing how that goes. <laughs> I'm trying to be cool. Stop it. I was trying to get a nice shot. <laughs> God. Once I sewed the outside edges and made whatever that is, I go back in and sew every scale on. I wish in hindsight I would have added an additional layer of quilt batting, but I think for a first go, it still had a puffy effect to it. I just wanted the scales to be a little bit more pronounced, but that just comes with practice. This is my first time trying it, so we didn't know what was gonna happen. I got anything close to it, I'm happy, which I did, so I'm happy. <laughs> I then sewed that fabric on the body with a ladder stitch and we are finally done with sewing and we can get on with airbrushing. And before I do that, I mask off everything because this is white and I'm absolutely terrified of miss spraying with the airbrush because I've done it before. So we just want to make sure we're covering all the things that need to stay white. And then I go in with a lovely teal. Although I will say it was supposed to be a little bit more green. I used a green. For the record, I use emerald green, which apparently when you add white to that, that is no longer green. That That is teal. That is teal pretty much blue, if you ask me. But, I mean, it still looks nice. And that crisp line from the masking tape, mm, oh, beautiful, beautiful. Love it. Before I start painting, I wanted to get the wire whiskers in place. And for that, I'm just drilling a little hole through his entire snootums. 
using the drill bit that matches the size of my wire. I used super glue and I tried to like fill the cavity with super glue, but this was stupid to do right before you are putting in the wire because then the glue tries to set up the entire time you're trying to push the wire in and so then you struggle the whole time. So I would recommend just putting super glue and super gluing it in place after you've put the wire in. Yeah, that, that might be more smart, I'm just saying. With that struggle over, it was time for painting. And with painting, it really, the project really came alive for me because this entire time, he didn't look like Haku. Like I was questioning the face structure and I was questioning, I was like, eh, you don't really look like Haku. Like you look like a dragon, sure, but you don't look like Haku. And then I did all the painting and I was like, oh, okay, okay, maybe you don't look a little bit like Haku, but, but I'm just going to shut up now and let the rest of the paint play on because there's not much else for me to say here. I glued on some fur just to blend the edge of the clay and fabric a little bit better. And then it was time to paint some chicken leggies, which again, I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna hush a little bit and let that play. With the final strokes of his little pedicure, he was done and it was time to finally work on his base. As with the last video, I'm going to be using MDF board as the base structure for the piece and then I'm just going to be using some pink insulation foam as to actually build up the base's form and I want that train track scene. I'm pretty sure I talked about it in the intro. I'm pretty sure I've put it throughout the video. If not, here is the picture that I'm trying to go for and so I also want to kind of mix it in with some actual like movie accuracy. So I want a train track scene where she's walking down the train tracks and so I'm just it's really staying simple with how I'm building this up. I'm just putting a little ledge for the train tracks to go down. I did make a little like off island to like make a little mini train stop where like little friends could stay and sit just kind of add a little bit more interest because I figured that big of a base with just Shahiro and water, it, it was too much of a big space for just that. So adding a little bit more just seemed to make more sense. I then go in with some sculpt mold just to build up a little bit more terrain and to smooth everything out so it doesn't just look like I cut up some pieces of foam. <laughs> so it looks a little bit like it could actually be real. I then mix some Mod Podge and Grout just to go over everything and it's really looked like pancake batter when it was all said and done. And now I kind of want pancakes, that's great. It's 10 30 at night i cannot have pancakes but as a wise man once said it's time to simple that goop. goop since i want haku to be quote unquote floating i'm going to be drilling some holes in the base so i can insert some acrylic rods for his support and i also need to make sure i cut some holes in the train tracks for them to go through those as well And then it's on to painting the base and the train tracky gravelly road gets a train tracky gravelly road color and after that I wanted to paint the other ground texture kind of like how I wanted the water to look just to make sure it was a little bit more vibrant. Now I didn't want to go realistic with this I still wanted to keep that dreamy kind of fantasy aesthetic so I did a lot of purples and different hues of blue just to make sure that it kind of still looked like that fantasy sunset vibe that that drawing picture originally had. And then I go over and dry brush everything just really brought everything together and then made all the details pop including the train tracks because I hated how they were black I wanted them brown. I'm totally using the excuse of there being like a little bit of greenery and some of the screenshots of the movie 
to use the static grass applicator to apply grass all around the train track so that could be submerged underwater. This was just an excuse for me to use a static grass king. Like, come on, I'm just going to be real there. <laughs> and then to add a little bit of detail, I wanted to add some gravel in the train tracks like it would actually have and then made sure I put some isopropyl alcohol. I can't say that without being tongue tied and then some Mod Podge to make sure that it all seeped in and stuff and it stayed nice and snug. Then it was time to paint all the figures that I wanted in the base. And here we start with Shihiro. Don't ask what happened to her leg. Uh, it was a no face accident, <laughs> but I just painted her the best I could. I certainly don't mess around with painting people. I'm not good at it. I'm not good at sculpting them. So I like Frankenstein the model together with like a bunch of different models. And I did some sculpting and it was a mess and a journey. Um, but I didn't think to record it because that would have been the smart thing to do. So now we just have the painting of her, but yeah, um, it was a struggle bus. I didn't breathe half the time I was painting her because I didn't want to mess up. And I, I had the same thing with Haku where I like, I needed to make sure it looked as accurate as possible with what I had, because like this obviously isn't a Shahiro model. It doesn't look like the Studio Ghibli, uh, accuracy or anything, but it, it's her vibe enough. You know, it's her vibe enough. To attach her to the base, I just did a little pool of UV resin, stuck her in there and then cured it until she would be locked in place. And then even more so when I went and added resin on top, which is the next step. That's a, that's a good segue. That's it. That was good. That was good. <laughs> but yes, that is the next step. And I just boxed it in with some acrylic panels to make sure the resin wouldn't leak out. And then the scary thing of just pouring a bunch of resin into a container. This was a lot of resin. Like... Compared to all the people who do like really deep pours, like, no, this was not a lot of resin. But for me, who's never done it, this was a lot of resin. And me and editor Sarah were just like panicking the entire time. Like, are we doing it right? Are we going to mess up? What's going to happen? I don't know. This is a lot of resin. What if it pours out everywhere? What if something goes wrong? It was fine. Nothing, nothing happened. There are like some micro bubbles, but that's because I don't have a uh, vacuum chamber or pressure pot. And so, you know, you, I went as slow as possible and I poured as accurate as I could and slow as I could and you know it didn't warp it didn't blow up it didn't melt anything it didn't leak anywhere so hey I call that a win <laughs> And then I went over everything with my Dremel to give a nice little calm ripple texture. At least that's what I was going for. And this looks so quick. Like I actually did this so quickly, but here it is like real speed. It's pretty slow. It's a pretty slow process. Took a couple hours, but you know, it was worth it in the end. Definitely in the end, it was worth it. Man, oh man, did the resin dremeling really just kick up so much dust. Vacuuming was absolutely key with this. My god, it was everywhere. After I vacuumed six times, it was time to make the resin clear again. And for that, I just went over everything with a thin layer of UV resin. To make that ripple texture pop even more, because we kind of lost it when we made it all clear again, I went over everything with just a very light dry brushing of white, kind of just to make the like little froth waves pop a little bit more. And then off camera, editor Sarah made a little train stop crossing and a little no face holding little bow with a heart because she's adorable and it was an adorable idea. And then I tried to glue everything on supposed to be a nice shot of me putting it down you're not supposed to slowly slide away <laughs> god <laughs> i was like that's a nice shot of me putting the light on and then he's just like mm, bye <laughs> damn it <laughs> Off camera, we also made these UV resin like little U-shape holders for Haku to be nestled into. And once he was placed, 
the entire piece was done. He was done, his base was done, and everything looked lovely, and it was time to take a look at the final montage. <laughs> 